Hey, it's Kim DeWitt here. Welcome to another plug-in knowledge session. In this session, we're going to continue on with our isotope ozone 8 sessions, but we're going to talk about the integration with Neutron 2. So if you're new to my videos and new to my channel, if you like what you see, click the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell to be notified of all future videos. I've done a, quite a few videos on uh, isotope ozone 8 and I've previously done videos also on isotope neutron 2. Now there's a bit of integration that they put with the two plugins and where it comes mainly into play and where I found it comes into play is in the tonal balance module uh, that comes with those plugins. Now I can't remember exactly which plugin it came with, but I definitely got it with either one of them or both of them. And they do have links together and communicate with each other. So I think the concept is fairly new and I'm hoping that it's going to grow over time, the integration because there is some limitations with what you can actually do in it. And it's a nice little feature if you use both plugins within uh, your mixes as you, as you go through them. And uh, we'll obviously show you what I can uh, in the tutorial. And let's just get into it now and uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I've got a song here and I, what I've done is to start with, I've put the tonal balance control on the mix bus there, right on the output. So if we play the entire song, you'll sort of see how it sits in the balance there. Obviously we can adjust our targets and stuff like that, but this is not really a tutorial on tonal balance control, but this is obviously the main feature of the integration of the two plugins. So where it comes into play here is if we look down in this section here, we can select here and we can look at different plugins. So in this case here, also on the mix bus, I have a copy of Ozone 8 Maximizer. So it's a limiter. Now, if I was to select that, we get just this little window pops up here and it doesn't seem to be much going on there because the integration uh, is, is sort of minimal for a lot of the modules and the plugins, but certain features come into play when you add the right module. So in this case here, if I play the audio, all we get is a frequency Spectrum view, but that view there is actually from this plugin here, so wherever it is in the chain. So, for instance, if I was to put a maximizer just on the drums, And I'm just going to move that up so it's not actually doing anything. So while I have the audio playing, if I switch between the two plugins, you should see a difference in what it's actually showing you in the spectrum there. So this is just showing us our drums. See it's a bit lower here. And it fills out with all the rest of the audio there. So with a, quite a lot of the modules, that is what will happen. But where it sort of comes more into play is if we add something around an EQ. So I've loaded a Ozone 8 EQ onto the drum bus. So now we can click that here and you can see now now we've got some control over this so the advantage of this is if we're finding our waveform 
here or our uh, tonal balance is not quite right and we want to make some adjustments, we can do that on the various plugins here and it depends on where they are in the chain. If we had it on the mix bus then we could be making some adjustments, adjustments across the entire mix bus. Or in this case here, if I decided that this uh, tonal balance here was not coming out right because of something just wrong with the drums, then we could work on the drums. Now obviously we could work on it in the actual plugin itself, but we can also do it from here. And you can see, you can see there it's adjusting that plug in there. So this is going to adjust this EQ just on our drums. Now we might decide that it's our bass guitar, but to show the point of when Neutron comes in, if we load an EQ for Neutron too. All right, so now I've got a copy of Neutron 2 equalizer on the bass bus. And at the moment we are looking at our Ozone 8 version, which I was showing can adjust the settings there. But maybe we say the bass is actually not right now. We could obviously go across to our plugin, or we could switch across here, and you'll see that we have all the settings for Neutron 2. So then we could start playing with that from, again, the tonal balance. Determine if that's good. Maybe too much. Cut it. Then we'll start to see this rise up as it averages out a bit. Now we're not necessarily targeting this genre, so these settings aren't absolutely correct, but as you can see there, we can adjust it from there or there. And vice versa, if I actually adjust it from the plugin, you can see it actually having an impact on the tonal balance control as well. And we can keep switching between the two. So we could say, okay, I want to do that, but I want a little bit more to Ozone 8. And you'll see Ozone 8 here is getting adjusted as well. You'll notice that while it's pretty handy here, it's not, hasn't got all the settings. Okay, so, you know, there's a few features here in that we can change our shape of our items. We can change the, the frequency here as well, if we wish. We can change the band and work on a few things, but obviously, it doesn't have all of the capabilities that are in here, but you know, it's got most of them. So we can switch between things like that and surgical mode. We can even bypass the plugin. Now you'll notice if I just click, it doesn't hold. So it's like a latch type situation there where you've got to hold it down. So if we're doing a huge boost, you want to see what this plugin's doing. Hold the bypass down. Back in. Do that up to our other one. And we've got some other features there soft saturation. So, a lot of the features that are displayed on the actual plugin are in here as well. So, if you're right at the end of your mix, and you're just checking out your tonal balance and you know you don't have any of these plug-in windows open you're concentrating on the final output here and you're just looking to see how it all performs you think you've got it mixed well instead of opening up each of these items to go and make some adjustments you can obviously do it straight from the tonal balance here and see the impact and hear it as you're doing some of the work 
but it is fairly limited. There's only so much you can do. It, it, it can't change all of the settings. And, you know, you'll see here, there's some other features that I have in here that if I change over to them, we're going to end up getting our, just our frequency spectrum at the point of those modules. So it can be very handy if you want to see, like if you're trying to determine a problem with this um, tonal balance, you can check various points in there. Now, the other thing you can do is if you don't have a plugin on a certain channel and you don't want one on there. So for instance, let's pick a track here and let's just say we want to concentrate on the acoustic guitars but we don't have an isotope plugin on here we don't have ozone we don't have neutron 2 so i load a instance of neutron 2 mix tap onto the acoustic guitars here and what that allows us to do is then we can actually monitor that tap so it's basically as it indicates provides a tap for this plugin to see there so when we do that even though we don't get any actual features we get to see the waveform of the acoustic guitar And we've got various features on the mix tap here. We can change the volume if we need be. We can change our phase, a stereo, a time delay, and we can engage a high pass filter if so choose be. The mix, mix tap does a little bit more than just uh, provide a tap, but you know, that is pretty much the primary function that you're gonna use this for. You'll even see there with the waveform, it's a bit of low end there. We can filter it out. So we can use it to our advantage to be looking at this and make some very subtle adjustments and very, very subtle. Now this is obviously a mono uh, acoustic instrument here, so we don't get the advantage of these stereo widths and everything else. But to be honest with you, I'm not really gonna use that feature there but if you want to be able to tap into any of these tracks and have a look at them on the tonal balance here you can do that with the mix tap plugin so there you go there is a bit of tutorial on integration between isotope ozone 8 and isotope neutron 2 hopefully you've gotten something out of that hopefully it's been helpful it's uh, a nice feature but i think to me it's a little bit limited and I'm not sure how much I would actually use it. I can see the potential in it and I can see why they're doing it. Some of the adjustment type things that you can do with EQs in total uh, tonal balance and stuff like that. It's nice, but I personally would open up the individual plugins and do the work there myself than trust doing it in total balance just because I, I like to see the whole content and not a cut down version, but I can see how it would work. And maybe for you, this is actually a more practical solution and you actually prefer it. Maybe you've got a good idea of how you use it that I haven't thought of. And let me know in the comments. You know, I'd love to hear your opinions on it in the comments. Do you have any thoughts? Did I miss something that you thought was uh, that you use that is valuable and how you use it to improve your workflow? So let me know in the comments, definitely love to hear your feedback and get your opinions on things, especially if I've missed something or made mistakes. So if you liked the video, click the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell to get notified of all my future videos. 
and hopefully it's been helpful. I thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next video.